and welcome to Something to Talk About. I'm Linda McNamee, and for the next hour, as you saw from our introduction, we're going to find out a little bit more about the food pantry and the services that they provide, especially during the pandemic, which we've experienced now for close to eight months. But before we begin, I would like to invite you to give us a call this evening when you meet my wonderful guest. You could call us at 781 two seven zero nine one nine nine or you can email me anytime at talk at vcattv.org if you have a suggestion for a future topic or if you think of a question that you weren't able to ask during tonight's show i want to thank my crew for this evening chris flaherty staff member here and wearer of many hats thank you chris for making sure that this production as well as several productions at BCAT are still going strong and I want to thank my husband Paul, Paul for staying home for daddy date night as always hopefully you are having fun with the kids and the cats so housekeeping aside all done I would like to introduce you to my wonderful guest Jane McIninch McIninch yes yes okay who is the director of the food director food pantry Technically, my, my title is coordinator. Coordinator. Yes. Yeah, but it takes a lot to coordinate. I, I, I think you deserve a, a new title. <laughs> but thank you for joining me. Thank you so much for having me back on your I show. I know. I was looking back at my records, and it was like 2014, I think. I was in still in the double-digit numbers for my episode <laughs> numbers, and we're up to episode 185 right now. My goodness. So and I think you were like episode 42 or something. So <laughs> thank you for coming back. I'm glad I didn't scare you away. Absolutely not. So because it's been so long and since I might have some new viewers, could you refresh my memory a little bit about where you grew up and how you came to the Burlington area and how you became involved with the food pantry and people helping people? Sure. Um, so I actually grew up in Denmark. Um, so I'm an import. Um, I came to Burlington uh, by way of Georgia. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that has a story. <laughs> yes, it does, but that's for another day. Um, but um, we moved to Burlington in 1999 um, when we moved to Massachusetts. Excellent. Hey, that was like the centennial year or the yeah one of the one of the centennials. Yep. Cool, you picked a great year to come. Yes. Burlington seemed like a really nice town. Uh, we love the effort on families um, and all the programs for families, you know, being young, relatively newlyweds with the dream of starting <laughs> a family someday. Um, that really spoke to us. Um, so that's what brought us to Burlington. Um, and well, it must have been pretty good because you're still here. We're still here. <laughs> we're still in the same house. <laughs> Um, so yeah, absolutely, and move. now have t raised two boys. One just started college this year, and one is still here at Burlington High School. So cool. um, after spending about 10 years in local biotech, I had wow. my own business for about four years um, and decided that that was really probably a little bit more like a glorified hobby. Okay. Um, and Owning your own business I, is really tough. It is tough, and I I was making chocolates, <gasps> which everybody loves chocolate. I would eat all the profits. That wasn't really the problem. <laughs> the problem was that I I would I was actually I was doing really well, and I'd gotten to the point where I had kind of maxed out my production. Oh. Okay. Um, and that's a good problem to have. Yeah. Except I really didn't have a great business sense, so taking it to that next level. Uh, Okay. wasn't really something that I knew how to do okay. and so I decided maybe it was time to try to find else. something new <laughs> and it just happened to be at the same time um, a friend of mine was on the board actually still on the board of people helping people and she reached out to me and asked if that was something I was interested in cool and so I jumped on that in 2013 and I've oh. been there ever since well glad you're still around thank you so 
have you been, did you start as the coordinator or were you like in another role that kind of morphed into the coordinator position? No, I mean, so at the time when I started. Mm, um, you used to be co-coordinators, right? Well, we are still co-coordinators. Oh, okay. Yes, we are still co-coordinators. Um, so there's two of us uh, managing the ship, um, sharing the responsibilities <laughs> of making sure that food comes and goes to the right people. Excellent. And that we have the people available to help that we need and you know, everything else that goes in between. So how do you find out which people need your services? So a lot of it is word of mouth. Okay. We work with, you know, various different organizations throughout the community to make referrals. We work okay. very closely with the Burlington Youth and Family Services. Um, and the senior center. Okay. Um, you know, whenever they have someone in that could use additional services, they okay. will refer them to us. Um, we also work very closely with school counselors, um, oh, you know, okay. houses of worship, wherever people can, you know, learn about these kinds of things or wherever people they encounter people who are sort of thinking more sort of whole picture in uh, in their okay. situation and they will kind of refer us to uh, refer them to us oh okay now are there like minimum requirements or do you just go by these you know like children and family services if they refer you refer if they match you up <laughs> <laughs> like who's referring who to who's whom referring so who, yes. um you just say okay you've been referred no, we do have our own requirements. Like screening um, point, okay. I mean, our biggest screening point is Burlington residency. Um, okay. So, but we also technically have a, a financial requirement. Okay. Um, we we do adhere to um, the USDA um, financial requirements, but in addition oh, okay. to that, which those are very stringent. Um, okay. But in, so in addition to that, we also use the uh, Massachusetts Good Neighbor um, financial guidelines, oh, which are okay. much, much more lenient. A little lenient. more flexible. Okay. Um, and because you know, the the USDA is based on I believe it's like 198 percent of the federal poverty limit. And uh, okay. You know. Burlington is a relatively affluent community, an expensive community to right. live in. And so, you know, if, if you're talking poverty levels, mm -hmm. there is a, a huge gap up to from there to what it really costs to live in Burlington. Right, yeah. Um, and so to try to narrow that gap a little bit, okay. we also use this Massachusetts Good Neighbor okay. uh, guidelines that allow people who who do you know who just can't make ends meet um, and stay in Burlington and stay in <laughs> Burlington exactly and you know we also do go even beyond that because you okay. know to us it's important that nobody goes hungry so we okay. may take in a family and say all right we'll support you for three months and then they'll be working with youth and family uh, services okay. to sort of get their budget under control and then we'll support them during that period okay. um, until they can kind of get back on their feet. So this is ideally just a temporary need for you to provide? Correct. Okay. Um, and certainly to anyone that doesn't qualify financially, we are looking at a temporary while we try to work with them to okay. get to a point where they're self-sustainable. All right. Now backing up a little bit, I know we had this conversation briefly before we started recording. What is the difference between people helping people and the Burlington Food Pantry? Well, I'm glad you asked that because I, I do think that it's something that a lot of people are confused about. And we did- <laughs> Me for one. <laughs> <laughs> so we did try to change actually the name of our uh, of the pantry to be the People Helping People Food Pantry oh, to try to okay. help erase that confusion because okay. we, People Helping People is us and we are People Helping People. Okay. Um, so we are part of one of the programs that People Helping People support or offer. 
Um, okay. Alongside with the food pantry, they also offer what we call the covenant for basic needs, okay. which uh, is... What's that? That is uh, where people can ask for financial assistance to help them through a uh, uh, financial crisis. Okay. So, you know, if they are at risk for losing their housing or have lost their housing, um, we Youth and Family Services, with the help of People Helping People, uh, can sort okay. of support them through to a better place. Okay. Um, like it could also be, yeah, it could okay. also be, you know, at risk for utility shut off or, um, you know, medical costs or anything like that, um, people can come in and get temporary emergency assistance. Oh, okay. And then, of course, we have our wonderful holiday programs, which I hope we'll talk about yeah, a well little we bit Why don't talk about them now? Oh, the holidays sure. are coming up. I know. They're yeah, right on the doorstep. This is just a set. cheat sheet, so I, mean, I forget what I'm supposed to talk about. But <laughs> so Thanksgiving is coming up. Yes. Thanksgiving is right around the corner, and we hosted, last weekend, we hosted a big food drive, which was very well attended. Thank you so Yay. much to the Burlington community um, of bringing in a lot of the foods that we need. Again, you know, we're in the midst of a pandemic, so nobody can do anything the way it's tried and true. Um, and have we have to redevelop every program. Have you noticed that, you know, donations have gone down during the pandemic? Or have they increased because there's more need and people who are able to donate feel that they want to help more? So I think initially there was a huge, huge outburst of people wanting to help. Okay. Um, initially, donations financially and food donations were pouring in. Okay. And then I think that over the summer, you know, people- Fatigue set in. Yeah, <laughs> fatigue, you know, a certain sense of new normal, Oh, okay. Um, kind of set in and, and donations kind of dribbled off a little bit. Um, but now that we're getting into the holiday season, which is a traditionally, you know, a high donation, okay, a uh, high charitable donation giving time, um, see that? our donations are definitely starting to pick up again. Cool. Um, so, so, yes, but because of the pan, normally we will collect the food actually the weekend before Thanksgiving. Okay. And pretty much within a day, turn around and give it right back out to families on that Sunday okay. before Thanksgiving. But this year, you know, we couldn't do that. Um, we had to rethink how we run the Which program. Which we'll talk about shortly. <laughs> and so we needed a little bit more time to take in the donations, sort them, organize them, and then actually prepackage the food okay. for families so that when we do distribute on that Sunday, we di distribute as a prepackaged okay. uh, food okay. to families basically coming in in a drive through okay. manner and we just pop it in their trunk and they're on their way. Um, so we needed a little bit more time. Okay. Um, now are there other events like the most recent food drive coming up between now and well we do have we do have as much as we did get a wonderful large quantities of food um, which we really appreciate we are still short on chicken broth cornbread baking mixes and mayonnaise um, so if anyone out there is watching and would like to contribute those items we would love to take those in between now and um, the definitely Sunday Thanksgiving yeah, um, the sooner the better. Um, we have another sort this Saturday, um, and then we will actually be packaging up the prepackaged bags okay. on the 21st. Um, so prior to that, we need these items. Okay. And what about Christmas? Christmas is right after Thanksgiving. That I that was is. just watching my neighbor <laughs> hanging their Christmas lights. Uh, I can't do that yet. <laughs> I can't do that until after Thanksgiving. December 1st. That's what I'll start. So we are already in the in the midst of planning for okay. what we call our wish tree program. Okay, and that's the tree at the mall. That is the tree at the mall, okay. and the mall is hosting that again this year. Okay. Um, it is located on the second floor, right above Santa. Okay, um, is Santa going to be there this year? Honestly, I don't know. I would assume so. Some I hope so. some form of Santa would be okay. there. I don't know. Santa with a mask. 
<laughs> Socially distanced. I, I don't okay. quote me on okay, that. Okay, so anyway. I can't imagine a holiday season without Santa. So we're there. Um, uh, every child associated with the pantry are allowed to make three wishes. And in addition to those wishes, they also are provided with PJs, underwear, sweatshirts, hats and gloves, shoes, books, more toys. Um, toys! You know, a lot of the teenagers really love gift cards so they can go shopping on their own. Um, and in, in addition to actually having the, the physical tree at the mall this year, we also, uh, the police station is also accepting gifts. So if you can't make it back to the mall to drop off the gifts or if you oh, purchase something okay. online, you know, you can drop it off at the police station. Okay, so you go to the mall to get the tag. Yes, we will also be putting some of it online. Oh, um, okay. So we haven't quite worked out the details yet, okay. but we will have some online component where you can pick up wishes as well. Okay. Now, for each child, you mm -hmm. mentioned that there's like a little checklist. Is all of that on one tag, or no. is it like no, pajamas no, 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 on, no. you know? Each tag has one gift on it. So like little Amy has a pajama tag, a socks and underwear tag, a toy tag. Yep. And, uh, okay. Yep. So that help that kind of spreads it out to that make it easier. That spreads out the so love exactly. There's not a huge financial commitment for the donor. Nope, not at all. Okay. It, and the commitment can be you know as big as you you want. I mean, you can buy a pair of socks, or you can. So the the individual gifts that the children are allowed to make the custom gifts or wishes, okay. um, we allow them up to forty dollars per gift. Okay. Um, so you know, really, it could be from. So they can't ask for you know uh, an iPhone a or a computer or. or okay. Yeah, we okay. we try to stay away from that. <laughs> I want a new car. <laughs> Get my license. So so when does that start? So that starts. The wish tree will open up at the mall on November twenty eighth. Okay, so that's like the Saturday after Thanksgiving. Yes. And okay. then we will be collecting through, I believe, it December 13th. Okay. Now, is there a staff person at the tree during certain times or just whenever the mall's open or can somebody just come and take a tag? How um, does that so work? I believe this year the tags will actually be on the tree. So we'll kind of reverse it this year. Mm. Um, okay. And then, um, but the table will also be staffed. Oh, okay. Um, I don't believe it's fully all the hours that the mall is open, but I don't actually know the exact hours. Okay. I think it's like 10 till 6. Okay, you're still looking like for that. volunteers yes, for that? Yes, we are. Now, how would somebody volunteer to staff the table? Um, well, you can either reach out to us through our Facebook page, or you can always just call the pantry. Okay. Anything can always go through the pantry, and like, we hey, will get them all. filter it to <laughs> the right people. So speaking of staff at the pantry, um, how many staff members are there and how many volunteers do you have and how has that changed, good or bad, since the pandemic? Um, so <laughs> it has <laughs> definitely changed. Everything has changed. <laughs> yeah. So the, like I said, we are, there's two staff members, uh, Cheryl Barnes and myself. Okay. Um, we share the coordinating roles. Um, Pre-COVID, we were mostly sort of alternating. You know, on any given day, okay. only one of us was there. Okay. Um, now we, it takes both of us present to run the place. Okay. Um, and so at any given time, usually we are both there. Um, we have anywhere from two to 300 volunteers across the organization wow. that okay. we pull on. Um, we had to unfortunately ask a lot of our volunteers to kind of take a break because a lot of our volunteers were, you know, retirees. Okay, so possibly at that at-risk population. A little bit more at-risk population. Okay. A lot of them were not happy about it. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> um, and of course that also left us empty-handed. Um, so we were desperate for more people to join. Okay. Um, we had to, you know, spread out 
um, sort of reconfigure having fewer people on any given shift. Okay. Um, what was your normal shift? I mean, how many workers did you have at any one time? So it's pre-pandemic. Pre-pandemic, it sort of depended, um, but it could be upwards of ten to twelve people there. Wow, y'all um, fit at a, tiny at a given shift, um, just because of, uh, especially during distribution. Oh. You know, we needed three to four volunteers working directly with the client. We had a check-in oh, person. Okay. We had individuals working in the back you know, stepping in to restock shelves when needed oh, or, okay. you know, working on sorting and organizing in the back with the coordinator. Um, there were people there the on hand to help clients carry the food out to their cars. Um, and obviously that was a situation that did not allow for social distancing. So now we have to bring that down to okay. now it's more like six people Ugh. at any given time. Um, sort of spread out working in opposite ends of the building. Okay. And that building is not very big. It is not a very big building. So how, how does the whole operation work now? Because I, with the rules of social distancing and limited capacities and mask wearing and sanitizing, how did you reinvent the wheel? Because <laughs> you kind of had to do that. We definitely had to do that. Um, yeah, pretty much overnight we had to, you know, when everything started closing down in mid-March, we were like, you know, during our biggest distribution times, we would have upwards of 10, 20 clients in line waiting mm -hmm. in a very small space. I mean, the pantry itself is only slightly bigger than your studio. Yeah. And so we're immediately we like, we can't do that. Um, and so we knew we had to exclude the clients from access to the pantry. Um, it took us probably about a month of trial and error okay. um, of modifying, continuously modifying how we were operating to come up with our current system, um, which okay. is basically a drive through. The clients okay. are directed through the parking lot, okay. the clients stay in the parking in their cars the whole time. Okay. Um, a volunteer or myself will meet them at their car. Mm -hmm. um, we have a list of available foods for the day, and we will go over that list. So instead of the clients picking the foods directly off the shelves, okay. now they're basically just asked, "Do you want, you know, this category and that category?" So we okay. go through the list. The list is designed in such a way that when it enters the building, it is immediately cut into four small pieces of paper. Okay. And there are four volunteers lined up in opposite corners okay. to pack a piece of that list. So ah. we've got two volunteers in one end focused on packing the non-perishable items. Okay. And we've got two volunteers in the other end focused on packing the fresh fruits and vegetables and the meats and the dairy and the oh, breads and, okay. and whatnot. And they all get together. Now, how often or how frequently do your clients go to the pantry? Is it every week, every two so weeks, every So every month? family is invited to come in every week. Okay. Um, not every family does. Um, some families okay. choose to come only once a month. Um, some people okay. come when they need it. Um, okay. And we do have a lot of families who definitely come every week. Okay. So with this whole new configuration that you have where, you know, you're divided and you're bringing it, I mean, how does, how do you bring it back out to the client? Do you like bring it in a box? Are they in bags? So it's a combination of okay. boxes and bags. And um, like free trunk, you know, bring it in the trunk. Yeah, so the idea is okay. that we ask the families to make sure that they come with an empty trunk so that we can, our volunteers can plop the food in their trunk oh, um, okay. without having to interact with the, the, with the family, um, you know, to try to social distance. Okay. Um, if they're not able to or fit like it in the trunk, okay. um, we basically say we provide the food to you on a cart and then once the volunteer steps away, then the family can okay. come out and pack it up themselves. 
Now I know like some places, like the library, when you bring a book back, they have the, the book is in quarantine for a week. Yes. Do you have to do any of, you know, the, the non-touch and leave your donations to rest or to decontaminate or anything? Or can you just put it right on the shelves? Or how does that work? We, it's not something that we really have any guidelines around. Okay. I mean, there sort of is a natural quarantine build okay. into it because from the time that somebody leaves a donation in our do okay. contact free donation center, you know, we only sort once a week. Oh, okay. And so that donation might have actually sat there for a week okay. um, before it gets sorted and organized and added oh, to our shelves okay. and then in, in depending on the type of food it may actually end up sitting on the shelf you know for, for a few week. weeks before oh, okay. it actually are is given okay. out to a family okay. so there's sort of a not a natural okay delay and built into the system you know depending on who you ask I you know the the whole COVID-19 thing nobody really knows exactly how it works so like everybody has their own interpretation of rules and regulations and processes and everything so yeah so tell me more about the um the donations and the drop-off and how does somebody go about making a donation yeah so that was the other piece that um we kind of had to change dramatically um First of all, with the library closing, that was one of our big donation bins. Oh, that's right. Um, in the library, um, we have donation bins around town in various different businesses where people can drop off. Um, okay. There's a list on our website um, that tells you which businesses okay. um, have these bins. Um, but we also our hours at the pantry are somewhat staggered and we're okay. not there you know 24 7. <laughs> why not <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i have a life too and <laughs> so you know to facilitate people making donations we actually were able to get a donation of the use of one of the my box storage pods oh excellent and so that's placed right at the entrance of our parking lot okay um, where people can, there are bins in there that people can drop their food okay. in. We have a little notebook. We love it when people leave us little messages. Um, and there's also um, little sheets they can, people can fill out if they want a, a okay. note from us acknowledging oh, their donation. Okay. Um, okay, like for tax purposes or yeah. whatever. Okay. Yeah. Now, is that drop off? limited hours as well like not really it is it is open during daylight hours seven days a week okay um so that was a way for us to make it readily available for people to uh, donate okay. and also to donate in a contract contact free manner um so they didn't have to come over okay. talk to one of us you know um so so this sort of really facilitated the ability, especially in, in the early days when, you know, people were really wanting to help. Yeah. Before the complacency and the, yeah. okay. Yes. How many families roughly um, are served by the food pantry? So it really is, a, you know, it, it comes and goes from week to week. Okay. Um, on average, over the last year, Okay. We have supported 166 families a month. Wow. That okay. is 463 individuals. That's up from last year we were on average supporting 150 families. Wow. But okay. that being said, you know, in the month of April, we peaked at 201 families. Wow. In a, in a month. Um, now, has that continued to grow because more people are getting laid off? So I think that there was there was an, an early uh, peak because a lot of people were delayed getting their unemployment. Uh, seat. OK, but then as additional services started kicking in, people okay. started getting their unemployment. See, um, actually, for anyone who received SNAP benefits, um, okay. they were actually getting additional SNAP benefits because okay. of uh, school feeding programs were okay. down. 
Um, and so we kind of peaked in April, then things kind of dwindled a little bit towards the end of August. Okay. Um, but then as school started back up, a lot of those additional programs started dropping off. Oh. And so even though the school system started providing food for the children again, okay. you know, the, the it doesn't quite offset the loss in SNAP benefits. And so a lot of oh, families kind of okay. came back at that point okay. seeking additional services. Okay. Speaking of schools, I have two kids that are in the Burlington school systems, one mm -hmm. elementary, one middle school. And I don't know where the program originated, but right now they're saying that any student can get free breakfast and free lunch. Is that any program through the pantry or is that one of the, the government benefits or how does that fit in with your big picture? So it is not, it does not have anything to do with people helping people. It okay. is a school run program. Um, okay. I don't know all the details, but I believe it is a um, state funded program. Okay. Um, and I believe the, the idea is that in order to make sure that no child falls through the cracks, we will make food available to all children. Oh, okay. Now, since the installation of that program, have you seen any changes with your families? Um, not yeah, really. but not related to <laughs> not that okay. program. Um, like I said, because of when school started up, that decreased a lot of families snap benefits okay. they came in because of that because the the amount of food that they get um, depending on the age of the children oh, okay. it doesn't completely offset the loss in the snap benefits oh, okay. um, so so we have actually also so we switch from providing our lunch program to during the summer did you provide Yes, from okay. the time that school closed in oh, March okay. through the end of August, we provided um, breakfast and lunch, breakfast and lunch and snacks to the children. Wow! Uh, any children that would come out and pick it up. Were you able um, to like see your house at all, or were you at the pantry <laughs> the entire time? Because that's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. We have a lot of wonderful volunteers, um, and actually. The, the school program, you know, that's a program that we have run since 2015. And so it's kind of a natural transition for us because we had okay. an existing program. We knew the logistics of how to get the food to the families, which the school had never been in a situation where they needed to provide food for children that weren't in school. Weren't in school, yeah. Um, so we had the logistics in place. We had already, you know, planned the menu. Everything oh, was ready to go for okay. April vacation. Oh, so, okay. so it you just was kind really of expanded that. So it really was relatively easy for us oh, to okay. sort of overnight, literally overnight, you know, okay. um, put that, roll the April program forwards and put that into place. Now, will you be doing a similar program like during the winter break? So we had never expanded to the winter break because we hadn't quite figured out the logistics because it, it you know, just because of the holidays associated okay. with the winter break. Um, and it is my understanding that the school program will actually be available during school breaks. Oh, okay. So as of right now, unless we confirm otherwise, we've put our lunch program on hold until... Because you have enough other things to do. Let the schools give you a break. Until we get through this <laughs> um, and... Um, sort of the overall big picture changes. Now, we talked about it briefly, but are there donations in particular that you're always running out of? Yes. And you always need help? Yeah. So before I touch on that, oh, um, okay. why don't I tell you a little bit about where we get our food from? Sure. Um, I thought it was all donations. It is not all donations. Oh, okay, um, then tell me more. And the donations no come in from many different sources. Okay. So we get uh, a significant amount of our food comes from the Greater Boston Food Bank. Oh, okay. And the food that they make available to us is sourced from a number of different places. So some of that is, is direct food donations made from individuals and businesses 
to the Greater Boston Food Bank, which they then sort and make uh -huh. available to us. And how does it get from the Boston Food Bank to you? We have to drive in. You have to go get we it. We have to rent a truck and drive in and okay. pick it up. Okay. Um, some of the food that we get from them is funded through either state or federal funds. Oh, okay. And some of it they go out and purchase sort of through Feeding America, oh, sort of a conglomerate okay. of food banks from across the country, go directly to the food manufacturer and negotiate, you know, a, a good price. And then oh. that in, in turn is available to us for that price. Okay, and that stuff they just send you. You don't. So we we get put in an order every oh, week. Do? Yeah, okay. we we decide what we get from oh, them. Oh, cool. Um, and in addition to that, they also run what they call their um, a program where they facilitate relationships with local food businesses. Oh. So we have relationships with um, Shaw's, Target. Um, Trader Joe's. Do you do anything with Wegmans? Wegmans um, is a big one. Um, oh, fantastic. And many other, okay. actually beyond the borders of Burlington, oh, okay. um, where we get food donations directly from those stores, oh, either directly okay. to us um, by means of our volunteers go to the store and pick them up, okay. or we work with another nonprofit called Loving Spoonful Ooh, who okay. go around to stores and pick up and then bring it to us and we get to pick off the truck. Oh. Today I can use, you know, this box, I need lettuce, I okay. need eggs, I really whatever. need chicken broth, so yeah. I'm gonna, yeah, okay. Um, so we kind of shop on their truck okay. for what we need. Um, in addition to that, we also get food from, um, you know, a bunch of other businesses. We get uh, pastries from Star Mar or from Starbucks. We get bread and pastries Ooh. from Panera. Um, we get. Uh, we work with a local farm share called the Farmer Dave CSA out of Drake. Um, Farmer Dave. We work with the uh, organization called the Boston Area Gleaners, um, who basically work with local farmers when a farmer oh, decides okay. it's not worth their while to harvest what's left in a field, they'll call up the gleaners, the gleaners go in with volunteers, oh. they harvest the field, and then make food available to us. Okay, um, so that's where all the fresh stuff comes in. So that's where some of the fresh stuff comes okay. from, yes. And like the refrigerated stuff comes from like Shaw's and right. Legman's and okay, yep. so those businesses. Yep. And so, and then of course comes the direct donations to us from oh individuals okay. and companies conducting food drives. Um. Now, we had talked, I think the last time you were here, um, where like November tends to be the highest time of year, the most popular time of year for people to do food drives and make donations. Mm -hmm. Is there a time of year that's really slow that you could really use some extra help? Usually the summer is really slow. The summer? Yeah, oh, people okay. are you know distracted with their summer plans and that's okay. a time when it's really slow. Also right after the holidays. Oh, you know, okay. February, March is typically really slow until we get in, you know, typically we would have a big food drive with the postal drive in May Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, well, we didn't have it this year. Um, <sighs> Sorry, why I forgot about it. Yes. Um, uh, so, so that February through March, April okay. is a slow time. So, what are the items that you, the, the, the greater need items? Right. So, the items that we typically can't get in mass from all these different sources okay. are things like vegetable oil. Nobody seems to ever <laughs> think to donate vegetable oil. Okay. <laughs> um, also, because you can't really eat it. No, but everybody uses it in their food prep. Okay. Well, I think that's why people don't think right. about it. Right. Um, also, we like to have we like to have like your stable pantry items like sugar, flour. Um, okay. And also 
not only do people not really think about donating them, but it's also an item that don't really work well, especially with like the store donation bins. Oh, okay. Because if you can imagine a bag of flour, flour at the ooh, bottom yeah, of the bin and somebody throws in a can of something yeah. and you've got a mess. you got a mess. So those are things that we typically actually sometimes even okay. have to end up going out and, and buying. Okay. We're also finding that, especially with some of our um, ethnic families, um, where rice is a huge component of their diet, they're used to different kinds of rice uh, than what, you know. The basic white. The basic generic rich. long grain white yeah. rice. Um, they're used to eating jasmine rice, basmati rice. Oh, um, so okay. we're always looking for people to donate those types of rice. Okay. Hopefully in smaller bags, like one, two pound bags. So not a 20 pound bag. Not a 20 <laughs> pound bag. Can you even buy 20 pound bags of that yes, stuff? Yes, you can. Oh, okay. Um, we also are always looking for sort of the, the more um, high-end items like coffee, tea, and cocoa. You know, the oh. things that just sweetens life a little bit. You know, it's yeah. not an essential to have that cup of coffee in the oh, morning. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> but it is does sure essential. make us all a little bit happier. Um, yeah, without my coffee, nobody's happy. <laughs> and diapers and wipes. Okay, you do take stuff like we shampoo do, yes. and diapers and Personal wipes. Personal hygiene and items, diapers, wipes, um, adult diapers. Oh, um, okay. You know, those items are expensive. Um, okay. And so we always try to stock that. We do work with um, the Beantown Diaper Bank in Lexington, um, which is a wonderful program. Do you know there was one? That donates diapers to us ah, um, okay. on occasion. Um, and so that, that has helped tremendously yeah. um, for us to s keep up with the, but we only get diapers from them. We don't get wipes oh, typically. Okay. Um, so what about like paper towels and toilet paper you know because again back in March and April it's like the toilet paper was worth its weight in gold <laughs> no, I'm serious absolutely we do take donations um, we actually have funny story we um, relatives of some of our volunteers uh, live in New Jersey and you know how New Jersey is covered in warehouses yes and close to their house um, are one of these warehouses where they hold auctions okay and so you know for whatever reason a product isn't selling it was mislabeled or oh, okay. whatever the cause is it can't be s distributed through the normal chains it goes here and it's auctioned off okay. and so um, Chris got wind of these auctions and he found that there were toilet paper up for bids. Ooh, and so okay. they managed to actually win the auction on two pallets of toilet paper. Wow. <laughs> How do you get that home? So, <laughs> yeah, I probably had to rent a truck to get it home, stashed it at their house for a little while and then have slowly been bringing it up from uh, New Jersey. Okay. <laughs> So if you see a, an SUV on the highway stuffed to the brim with toilet, <laughs> toilet paper, paper, it's headed to us. <laughs> but we're also looking always for healthy snacks, um, you know, your typical side dishes okay. of mashed potatoes, flavored rice or pasta. We always stock, you know, plain rice and plain pasta, but, you know, a lot of people also like the flavor. Like the hamburger helper type stuff? Yeah, your mac and cheese. Okay. Um, you know, your pasta salad, your rice pilaf, oh, those okay. kinds of things, Spanish rice. Yeah, Uncle um, Ben's has the nice little, you know. Yeah, the nice little boxes. Now they even have, like, little microwave bags yeah. that's 90 seconds. It's yeah, like those the make for a quick meal. You add a protein and you've got a quick an easy meal for especially for families of one I mean, it's really difficult to cook healthy meals for a family of one exactly um, and so this provides for an easy meal um, you just add either some meat or some beans and excellent okay now I went to the food pantry last year with my Cub Scouts mm -hmm. and I learned a lot <laughs> and I know that one of the issues that a lot of times the pantry has is people are cleaning out their home pantries and putting everything in there so you have volunteers that sort all of the expired stuff and pull that out 
because you can't use that. As far as like the donations that are in there, so when you receive when you when you receive the donations, you pull out all the the expired stuff. How long does stuff do do food does food typically stay on your shelves before you have to start purging expired stuff again? So does that make any sense? Yeah, okay. yeah, I, I know what you're getting at. Um, so we have a wonderful Saturday crew um, headed up by Larry Warfield um, that do a phenomenal job coming in every Saturday morning, um, sort through all of the donations. Um, we kind of have three categories. There's the food that's in date that okay. goes onto our shelves. Then there's the food that expired in the last three months. We do make that available to our families. Okay. So, um, but we make that available as bonus above and beyond what okay. they would otherwise get. Okay. And only if they want it. It's not something we automatically give to them. Oh, okay. Um, and then there's the stuff that expired. Three years ago. Well, if it's three years <laughs> ago, we just <laughs> flat out throw it away. Okay. <laughs> but up to two years. Okay. Um, we donate on to another organization called the Brookline Co-op um, who uses okay. it um, to um, in their food pantry as well as preparing meals for homeless oh. in Boston, okay. Brookline and Boston. Um, so, so we do try our very best to make sure that everything gets utilized. Okay. Um, but for, with respect to food on our shelves, it all depends. I mean, there is food that cycles through there every week. Um, some okay. of the items, we just, we basically are lucky if we get a week's supply of it. Okay. Um, other foods, like canned green beans. <laughs> I was about thinking green beans. <laughs> do tend to sit a little bit longer on our shelves. Okay. Um, and, but we always, you know, with, we try to make sure that Everything is well rotated, kind of thing, or labeled. So Label, whenever okay. it goes into storage, that the boxes are well labeled, so that we know to when to pull it down before it expires. Oh. Okay. Um, and we try to make sure that there is not more on the shelves than we will use before it expires. Got it. So that we don't. So that we make sure that nothing sits on our shelves and expires. Uh, okay. And if there are things like canned green beans that nobody wants <laughs> that ends up sitting there and get close to expiration, we will okay. either, you know, have you'll move on. <laughs> we will either try to bonus it and and encourage people to find ways to use it, or we will uh, gently pass it on to the Brookline Co-op. Um, and hope that they can find. You want a use some chicken it. broth? <laughs> you get one chicken broth and three cans of green beans. <laughs> I just picture it now. You know, buy one get three free. Yes, so we have been known to do that. Um, or you know, we'll we'll give them ideas of you know recipes to make with it that people might not necessarily. Green think bean of. casserole. You, know, you, you you can eat <laughs> stuffing, other than for Thanksgiving. Yes, you can. <laughs> you're absolutely <laughs> right. So, you know, with all of these donations that you're getting, what types of refrigeration do you have available? Because some stuff just works better, like especially like the fresh fruits. You know, you mentioned dairy. Um, how, how much storage and how much of a shelf life does refrigerated stuff have? So it, it all varies. So that's actually been one of the things that um, I've worked on really hard at the pantry um, is to increase our level of refrigeration. So, you know, every time I meet with the board, they're like, oh, no, not again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you again. <laughs> oh, no, here comes Jane. Let's change locks. <laughs> um, so I think that when I started working there in 2013, we had something like two or three fridges and maybe one freezer. Um, now... I believe we have on the order of 10 fridges wow. and four freezers. They're all commercial units. Okay. Um, and we've, 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 we keep seeing we've maxed out the <laughs> amount of units we can fit in the building, yet but somehow we still manage yeah. to, to add more um, by necessity. 
Um, so yes, definitely. It, you know, it, it was a matter of necessity because I wanted to increase the amount of fresh fruits and vegetables that we mm -hmm. make available. And in order to do that, we have to have the refrigeration. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, the way food comes to us, it's not always as we are giving it out. You know, sometimes we do have to stock up on Monday so that we know we have enough food for the Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday distributions. Uh, okay. And so, you know, even like the frozen meats and the, the dairy, you know, we do need to make sure that it can. You still got Monday to Thursday. Yeah, and so, so okay. that means we have to have the proper refrigeration to store it. Um, you know, a lot of the a lot of the fresh food will come to us through the the loving spoonful okay. program of what's called salvage from local grocery stores. Oh, so in most okay. cases, the stores will pull it on or before the sell by date, okay. and then you know if it's meat, as long as they freeze it down, they can donate it. Um, oh, anything okay. else, you know, we we get a lot of what we call our prepared foods, or ready to eat prepared foods. So you know how. Grocery stores these days yeah. have like a whole department a whole restaurant. of yeah, <laughs> basically, they have to sell it the day they prepare it. Okay. Um, so anything at the end of the day, they turn around and donate to us. The food is good, you oh know, yeah. for upwards of four, five, six days, but the stores can only sell it the day they make uh. it, and so you know that gives us a couple of days to actually get it to a family and and uh. feed a family with it. So those are really popular items. Um, we also always try to make sure that we have, you know, milk, eggs, cheese, um, staples like that. Okay. Now, we only have about five minutes left, believe it or not. So what are your I plans have. for the future? Like, when we were there, it was super duper crowded with <laughs> all of my Cub Scouts and your two volunteer, two or three volunteers. We, we maxed the place out. And with all of the needs, you mentioned, you know, refrigeration. And do you have any plans for expansion? Well, we, funny you ask. Um, <laughs> so we actually just finished a uh, strategic planning process. Okay. Um, with the goal of increasing capacity. Um, so with that, you know, we have some, some sort of immediate short-term goals of uh, strengthening our organizational structure okay. um, and ensuring that we are ready to meet an expansion. Okay. Um, and then, you know, hopefully down the line that will result in looking at a bigger space um, which means we have to figure out, you know, better fundraising. Okay. Um, and so, so we have a plan ready to go, and we're very excited about getting started okay. on on those goals. Um, in in the really really short term, um, you know, if anybody out there owns a big building, <laughs> call me. Big empty building. <laughs> Big empty building with room in for lots of refrigerators. Because yeah, you'd have to stay in Burlington though, yes, right? Yes, we okay. need to stay in Burlington. Um, and um, so. Is this like, you know, over the next two years, over the next five years? When do you hope, ideally, when do you hope to expand? Well, I think that Realistically, you know, uh, sort of a, a permanent solution we are looking at probably within the next five years. Okay. Um, but realistically, we do need to figure out a more short-term solution oh, that can okay. carry us over from where we are today to um, sort of a more permanent solution. Okay. And that piece we haven't quite figured out yet. Got it. Um, because we have outgrown our space. Yes. Um, and with the uh, increased capacity um, here during COVID, I mean, our numbers are up almost 40%. Um, and we, there's no. We need a bigger space. Yeah, we need to no figure end. out how can we actually maintain this outdoor distribution during the winter. Um, we've got some really short term plans of how we're going to change things up. Okay. Um, for you know, be able to keep our volunteers dry and warm and safe. That would help. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
kind of need those volunteers yes, happy and healthy. Yes, we do. Um, but we need everybody's help and, you know, keep donating um, mm -hmm. to keep our shelves stocked. Um, keep volunteering. As I said, you know, we, we function on volunteers. Um, while we have to keep our numbers low who are mm -hmm. in the building at any given time, we do need to ensure that we still have enough volunteers to actually staff our shifts. Mm -hmm. Um, and keep telling people about our services, that we are here and that we are available. Um, because I still run into people that just don't even know we exist. Oh, and Burlington has a food pantry? Yeah, <laughs> and you know, I had a lot of people are one or two paychecks away from needing help. And you don't always know who those people are. No. And so just, you know, keep talking about us, um, keep helping us spread the word. Right, sounds good. So I think we it's hard to read the clock backwards. Um, <laughs> so you know, speaking of volunteers, um, while you were speaking, what kind of commitment is there? Are you looking for somebody who's available, you know, ten hours a week, two hours a week, two hours a month? I mean, what is What's the commitment? What kind of training is involved? So it's it's the commitment. Is we try to keep our volunteer shifts in two-hour increments, um, two to three-hour increments, unless okay. somebody wants to work longer. Um, but we try to keep them in those two to three hours, okay. thinking that that's a reasonable amount of time to ask. Um, we like reoccurring volunteers so that we can okay. get you on a schedule um, know when you come in you do training. the same job over and over again um, to minimize training most of it is on the job training okay um, and um, you know some people come in once a week some people come in once a month some people come when we need additional help okay. um, you know it, it there isn't a required you have to give us this much amount of time um, but if you're willing, we'll but if take you're what willing you and able, um, we love this remote working schedule. <laughs> Gives a lot of people flexibility in their schedule. Oh, I know, totally. Um, that has allowed a lot of people the ability to volunteer, you know, where I they would normally s yeah. be stuck in an office. Cool. Well, we are out of time. Thank you so much for coming. I really should have you more often than every six years. <laughs> 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 but it was wonderful seeing you and it was wonderful learning about how the food pantry is growing and all their plans for the future and how helpful you guys are thank you so thank you so much for having me right and i also want to thank everyone at home for tuning in this evening i hope you are as inspired as i have been over the past hour and give jane a call and i will see you around town good night